have to confirm on another device. Welcome to uh, Veterans View for You. My name is Aaron Hesingfeld and I am a veteran. I will be uh, begin my uh, official cast here in approximately 14 minutes. Um, trying to oh, kind of working out some of the audio kinks and whatnot. See if I can pull up what's going on here. Live streaming. This stream needs to be online. Okay, um, let's see here what dashboard brings up. I'm just trying to find myself on my own live stream on the computer looking for the chat because I would like to be thoroughly engaged with my viewers as soon as I can nail down my chat all right Welcome. See if that comes up on the live chat. We'll see if that comes up. Alright. Well, we'll see if we can't. At least share this on Facebook. Let me say, join me live in a few minutes tying a mercury cased caddis. Alright, this is it's lost me. If I access it through wait a minute here we go stream is good manage analytics this that and the other public view okay I think we have a better grasp on things. Okay. Still got to look for the chat. Open live chat in another window. Here we go. All right. Less than 10 minutes to go. <sighs> Hopefully we'll get a couple people watching at least. Um, 
So tonight, I just to give you guys uh, or gals, whoever is watching, a little bit of a preview. Um, I've been uh, reading a book that my father gave me. It's quite a quite a good read uh, thus far. It's called Tying and Fishing: Tailwater Flies by uh, Pat Dorsey. It's really nice. There's uh, actually a lot of photos. Um, 500 step-by-step -step photos for 24 uh, proven proven flies. <clears throat> um, and um, a lot of them have um, their, their mercury. I call them the mercury uh, this, the mercury that. Uh, let me pull up the the index is you got the mercury uh, black beauty, the midge, the blood midge, the brassy mayflies, pheasant tail, cased caddis, which is what we are tying tonight. Um, and there's all sorts of other uh, wonderful patterns in this book. Um, I am a big fan of the books. I am a big fan of YouTube. So, all right, well, let me see if I can get to a spot where I can start to share, share, share. Uh, let me go into my Facebook. Because we have a little more than seven minutes remaining. Bum ba da bum. So I posted a preview picture uh, on my Twitter account, Veterans View for You. Um, okay, let me see if I can't find my link. This is so much easier to do on an actual computer because you can select, copy, and paste the URLs and you can go wherever you want to go. And so I'm not bombarding the page trying to get people to tune in um, I'm gonna see if I can't find my previous post and then just post my link in my post that way it's kinda self-contained it's a it's a really nice um, nice page so if you're just joining me we'll be getting uh, started here in just a few minutes uh, six minutes is my uh, be my official start time. Feel free to say hello in the in the chat on uh, on the YouTube. This is where I am streaming from the the fly bunker. That's what I'm calling my it's my little spot. It's where I like to sit and tie. Maybe um, I'll go this way. I'll search. Search this group. And I can search my own name. And there it is. So at least the 21 people that, that liked it um, will be able to see that I am streaming live here on YouTube Sunday talk and tie um, some topics we're gonna be talking about um, this time I figured I'd write down a couple of ideas of things to to chat about for those who might actually be tuning in uh, chat away in the chat room on the chat message board veterans view for you on YouTube you know if you're watching and you are um, want to help out the channel 
hit that share button spread the word um who knows maybe someday i'll uh be able to get a couple decent webcams and uh, an actual computer this is all done off of my uh smartphone which i think is pretty darn nifty So, for you people out there that might be watching, just out of curiosity, um, you know, who is, uh, who's watching on a smartphone, who's watching on a tablet, who's watching on a computer, it's all, it's all unique. I think it's pretty, pretty interesting, uh, technology that is, uh, is among us. So let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. And I can share here. And I will tweet. So if you're uh, new to the Veterans View for You experience. Um, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under the the same handle, Veterans View for You. Um, right now, I do a lot of posting of uh, fly pictures, uh, patterns that I tie, so on and whatnot. Um, for me. Fly tying has been really good therapy. Um, being the veteran, I I suffer from uh, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, and I went through a program at the local VA and got involved with uh, Project Healing Waters, fly fishing. There I tied my very, very first woolly bugger ever. And at the time I was completely new. With brand new experience. And it's fair to say that I've literally been hooked since day one. Pardon the crack on the can. Mm. T minus almost one minute. I figured if I uh, started a timer, then I don't know, maybe people might be able to check it out and see what's going on. Um, so hopefully, I'll get a few people tuning in. Um, Oh, thank you, Josh, sharing my link to the live stream, which officially begins in 40 seconds. Can it be contained? I don't know. It's interesting, the, the delay between the camera and the live stream almost a minute not quite though all right stand by for the official begin hello josh and five four three two one all right hello hello and welcome to Veterans View for You live stream talk and tie. Uh, tonight we are going to be tying a fun fly. Um, it's really easy. This is um, it's a mercury 
cased caddis. Let me pull up my uh, vise, turn on the high beams, and we will zoom in on this fly. The mercury cased caddis. Um, there we go. Maybe we'll get this into focus. Uh, it's basically um, on a nymph hook and it is all dubbing. There's three, uh, three different types of dubbing on there. Um, got this real nice natural tan. Um, I really couldn't tell you the exact nomenclature of it. Um, a lot of my material is given to me. And it is simply known as um, number one. Uh, according to the, the recipe in the book, uh, it's calling for a hair's mask. Hair's mask. So um, this kind of looks like it. I don't know. It could be a little buggier. This stuff comes out pretty smooth. Um, so... I don't know. And then uh, the second piece of material that gets tied in there is um, caddis green is what we're going for. We're going caddis green ice dubbing. I really like these containers. They make it really easy to get the stuff out without getting a whole bunch in there. Um, something I do sometimes is I'll just take my, uh, tip of my whip finish. Get in there, and that really kind of helps things get started. And when I'm done, just poke it back in there so you don't don't lose much of your material. Uh, when tying this, when tying this fly, uh, you really have to keep things sparse. Uh, it's really easy to build up uh, an excessive amount of material. I really wish I could get that to focus in just a little bit better. Um, Oh, well, is it is my head no, too much light? Is that the problem? It's too much light. I don't know. I thought I had all these kinks worked out, but you know, when you go live, everything kind of goes backwards on you. What do you do? Anyways, um. I am using a Tiemco. It's a model 2488H. It's a size 18. Um, it's a fun hook. I like it. Nice and strong, nice and sturdy, easy to, to tie and work with. Um, so, once again... We are tying the mercury cased caddis and one of the things on my uh, talk and tie agendas are online challenges such as uh, the ice bucket challenge and the latest and greatest one that I think is interesting and a little bit noteworthy is the mannequin challenge where everybody runs around and then they just freeze right where they're doing and the coolest one i think i saw today was uh some gymnasts and it was pretty amazing there's guys and gals you know in the middle of routines and their arms are sticking way up or they're crunched over in a certain position uh the bead i'm using on this hook for this uh mercury Mercury cased mattis. It is a um, little small silver glass bead. It's a uh, silver lined on the inside. Um, looking at it, you know, just kind of off the get go, it, it doesn't really look like anything more than just your typical glass bead. But that, uh, that that silver lining on the inside really helps it to uh, to pop. 
um, makes things uh, a little, I don't know, less transparent, but more transparent, offers it a little bit of uh, reflectivity. Um, so one of the tricks that I do is I will isolate one bead and I just get it on the table and I push my finger on it pretty hard. And usually it sticks in there and I can just put my hook in my vise and with a little bit of patience and practice, um, I am able to just, uh, uh oh, just lost that one boys and girls. I'll try that again. That one did not want to get past um, past that little barb in that hook. There we go. Just a little pop down. Wish I could get this to focus. I apologize for the focus, ladies and gentlemen. But it is what it is. Alright, so I got the bead on, the hook on. If I just zoom out a little bit, maybe that'll help it. I don't know. Might be easier to see. Um, the thread I'm coming at it with is, uh, according to the label, all it says is uh, "Nymph Thread" by the Guide Rod Bros. Um, I don't know. Feels like a a six aught or so thread. Uh, not too thick. Not too thin. Nice and fibrous uh, it is a tan kind of a light tannish brown so like all good flies the world's most complicated flies begin with but a single wrap of thread and we'll just cast on that thread just to get things started um Crush the barb, Frank says. Yeah, I usually, uh, I don't know why I don't do it right away. I do Riverside, though. It's kind of a, a final check, systems check for me. Here we go. Welcome, Frank. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, happy uh, happy uh, belated Veterans Day. I know there's always some controversy when people say Happy Veterans Day, but to me, Veterans Day is a, it's a day of celebration for all that have served. And I even go as far as, you know, those foreign fighters from other nations that have fought by our side. Um, it was pretty interesting. Just got back from a wedding. Uh, the... Bride's family was uh, from Kurdistan, the neighbors to the north of Iraq. Uh, it was a, a beautiful, beautiful wedding celebration. It was interesting to, you know, talk to somebody from the region that you served in uh, combat in. Um, it kind of has me thinking, uh, boy, how wonderful would it be to go back to Iraq with a fly rod and reel and just spend some peaceful times and solitude. Um, you know, everything that, you know, fly fishing encompasses. So I want to keep this pretty tight. A nice tight wrap on there. Not a lot of dubbing. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to go too far forward because I need to leave a little bit of room for our next dub. Um, a little bit more wax here. And according to the recipe, I am using this uh, Caddis Green Ice Dub. Uh, this ice dubbing is uh, still pretty new to me. I couldn't really decide on um, what color to get, so I don't know. The price seemed right. Um, it made sense to me. I, I really like it. I've worked a little bit with um, some of the different colors, and I really like this caddis green. Um, 
Once again, a little trick that I use, I use my uh, whip finish and I can just get it in there and I can start to tough it out just a little bit um, as I go along working with it. And I'm talking a really small clump, like a half a, a half of a half, a quarter a clump. So once again, I'm going to spread this out pretty tight though. Nice tight dubbing noodle. I like calling it the dubbing noodle because that's that's what it's called. And I'm just going to do a small little kind of a abdomen section and I'm going to go over it again a little bit um, with the next piece of dubbing. And this I am going to use just the smallest amount. Uh, this is a um, black hare's ear. It's a super, super fine, um, I think. It's just a little bit goes a long way with this. Uh, you can sneeze and lose and use all your material at once. Um, so once again, just a small little dubby noodle on there. Here we go. Kind of want the ratio to be uh, a 50-50 between the green and the black um, on that thorax. And because I was using this wonderful tan thread, I'm just going to take my Sharpie and darken my thread a little bit. And I'm going to do a quick whip finish. I don't know. I don't. I don't like doing too many, too many turns on it. I don't like to build up the bulk. And I'll give it a nice snug, snug pull. And that is it. And I come through and I trim some of the really. Really big gnarly looking stuff, the really big stray hairs, but I don't like to go in and trim off all that super fine fine detail. Maybe maybe that. I think bugginess bugginess on a fly is never a bad thing. Um unless you're trying to do something super slick. So Let's see here. Yeah. That's definitely it. Now, if I could just get it in focus. Focus, focus. Maybe if I zoom in. Maybe if I put this right behind it. It's it's interesting because this... I know the the, the camera on the phone... I mean, I can go in and I can adjust all the manual properties of it when it's in regular camera mode, but it seems that when I put the phone in live stream function, it, I don't know. You guys tell me, why does, why does the phone camera not focus properly? Because that's too shiny. I don't know. So back to these online uh, challenges, this mannequin challenge. Uh, one of the funniest things I saw was, um, you know, in the world of memes, it seems that's, that's about as far as anybody can think, um, said that, you know, the grandmasters of the memes are military personnel that have ever had to stand in attendance of a change of command ceremony. And if you spent any kind of time in the military, you probably had to attend a change of command ceremony at some point in time or another, or you've just had to stand there for hours on end. And I don't know, I think it's, I think the military is the grand champions of that. Standing in one spot, waiting.
All right, what do we got here, Frank? Me and Piggy. Maybe black thread. Smaller noodle. A pan dummy. Thin green. Oh, we'll try it. We're going to try... What my new friend Frank suggests. So anyways, I'm going to get my bead head on here. And get things situated in the vise. Um, I find that to be a pretty easy method of uh, putting a bead on a vise. Um, I'm going to switch to um, black thread. Currently have a uh, Uni A dot. Um, now I found a web page and I, I downloaded the PDF and I failed to print it, but it had. Uh, the likeness is kind of a conversion chart between aughts and deniers and uh, a couple other units of units of measure that was a little complicated. Um, but that is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and start it off with a little bit of black thread. Um... Here we go. I'm gonna... um, I never, when I first started tying flies, I never really used dubbing wax. And again, I really didn't do, I stayed away from flies that required dubbing. Um, but the best way to, you know, overcome that fear is to just go at it. Um, so, I don't know. This is a this is a good fly to practice your your uh, your dubbing, your control, your tension, your distribution. I mean, a lot of us can sit here and you know just whip these out. Some of us are learning for the first time, and I love the whole spectrum. Um, when I do my dubbing, um, I really you know, when I'm messing with this wax, I kind of get a little bit of that wax, just kind of the tackiness on my finger. Um, I think it's a, I don't know, feels like it could be a paraffin wax. It's not super sticky. Um, but if you're in a pinch, you can actually use the oil that's on the side of your nose. I'm just on the outside of your nostrils. The outside, not the inside. And I found that when I do my dubbing, I kind of start... Uh, forward and then I work my side, my way rearward until my dubbing makes contact with the shank of the hook and they say to do um, your dubbing noodle you, you always want to rotate it in the same direction And I think this looks like a good stopping point for that tan. Um, I'm leaving a little bit more room uh, for a little bit more green. So there's extra extra piece of uh, dubbing that's still on my thread. You know, I can just go back here and just pluck away at it for a split second and tease that out. Um, gonna add a little bit of this um, chartreuse ice dubbing. I'm thinking. I think you know. I want to. I don't know. I want to take a small clump of this and throw it in the um, coffee grinder to see if I can't make it a little finer. But I think that would just result in shorter pieces. And it wouldn't, I, I couldn't get as tight of a wrap because the links on the fibers would just be a little bit shorter. All right. Well, 
Let's see, we black uh, and just finish with the black thread. So Frank suggests just doing the green and then to finish with the black thread. So I will add some wraps behind that glass bead to maybe get that same same effect. Maybe instead of the dubbing. This uh, fly was uh, should suggested to me by my pops, Richard, uh, when we uh, took a trip out to Montana. He caught uh, caught trout with it, and he was also the the giver of my book. Um, been posting quite a few pictures out of here, the Mercury Mercury series. Uh, Pat Dorsey's uh, tying and fishing tailwater flies. Um, I really enjoy it. I like these uh, newer books with the high res color pictures in there. Um, I think it makes uh, uh, learning and experimenting um, a little bit easier. I mean, YouTube has its place because we're sitting here on YouTube. You know, Frank, I like that. I I think. Despite the the focus being out of whack, um, it'll definitely catch a fish. Uh, so another challenge online is the ice bucket challenge. I personally uh, did not participate in the ice bucket challenge. However, um, it was interesting to, to watch unfold. Um, and in the past, their their annual donations were, you know, somewhere about two and a half million dollars. And from what I understand, uh, because of that ice bucket challenge, they brought in eighty. 80 almost 90 million dollars um, in funding and uh, I remember when it first happened they were talking about it on the radio it's like well you know unfortunately it doesn't mean we can just produce a cure for anything um, you know it takes time money research this that and the other so they have one part of the equation they have the money now so uh, yeah, I think so too. I think, I think so too. I could probably add a little bit of the black thread, black super fine. Okay, but not as much. All right, well, we'll try it again. This is, uh, kind of almost a halfway point. Uh, I have quite a few hooks prepped. I have some beads ready. Um, in conjunction with the book, I was given uh, some beads. And these beads are really nice. Uh, really easy to work with. Um, I took them out of the... Uh, the little Ziploc baggies, um, and I keep them in my small little glass bead container. Also got some silver, some black, and uh, ruby. 2% uh, of their proceeds are donated to protecting our fishing environment. Now, you can't beat that. I like when, uh, I don't know. I guess they don't, oh, right as I was about to flip it over, I fat thumbed that little tiny bead off. So once again, just kind of push it down, usually sticks on to, onto the pointer finger. Um, sometimes I will take a uh, hackle pliers 
or I have this little this little magnet um, came from a hearing aid earpiece um, and I can grab onto the hook and actually just scoop the little box of uh, um, and pull out pull out the bead that way. Yep, a little bit of Velcro. So let's see here. We'll go with the uh, the black thread again. Uh, once again, this is an A dot, and if I am correct in assuming this might be a 72D, 72 denier equivalency, I don't know why um, there's not a universal, universal anything. Um, but uh, it is what it is. There's really no no gauge that I could work off of. Um, you know, there's, there's really not a common consumer way to to measure. I like doing this on those fast forward videos. Whoop, 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 whoop. So Frank, what's your uh, what's your take on the uh, those fast forward videos that I've been publishing? They uh, they're pretty easy to make, uh, you know, like like this. I just run it off of my uh, smartphone. And uh, through the video editor that came stock with the phone, uh, one of the options is to uh, speed your video by two. And if I have a 10 minute, takes me 10 minutes to tie, I reduce it down to five, and then I reduce it down to two and a half, and... And it's all the way down to, you know, one and a quarter. The timing on it is kind of interesting at the beginning because I kind of have to think of how long it's going to take me to tie. And a lot of times I, you know, I I just do maybe one, maybe two takes on that. I don't spend a lot of time you know, going into super fine detail on those, because to me it's it's interesting to just uh, put it out there and, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I enjoy making them and, you know, it kind of gives myself a, a personal uh, visual um, archive of patterns. And especially now that I'm... Um, posting them on, on YouTube for everybody to enjoy. Um, I'm, I'm very particular on trying to remember to uh, record what my recipe is on there. So I'm, I'm sharing my virtual fly tying database on a, on a cloud that, that, that's there but not there. I don't know. They're, they're always in the book. Always in the book. So there we go. Hmm. And now a little bit of this black. Super fine. Super fine. Black hair's mask. Which is fancy for, I believe it's face. I just want to, I don't know, it's less less intrusive than saying, yeah, I'm using black rabbit face. <laughs> That's not good. You know, I, I, I think about the, the critters that... Yeah. Um, I just gobbled that up. Way too much. Way too much. Um, what's going on here? There we go. 
plenty of it. So it is 6.30, halfway in to my talk and tie. Not sure if my uh, phone ringer came through. Um, that was my wife calling me from work, I presume. Maybe I can let that hang for just a second and shoot her a message. Uh, boop, 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 boop. And I will tell her I am live streaming. Okay. Hmm. Well, this is with the black thread in comparison to virtually the same that's tied with the lighter thread and you know if I was just looking at one and not the other I'd say they're identical but having them side by side the one with the black thread is just a skosh darker and you know what does that make that much of a difference uh, I don't think so I mean uh, the fish are smart but they're dumb they're smart and they're dumb I think uh, we have to listen to the fish we have to listen to what they have to say That's the first step of uh, catching a fly or catching a fish is you have to listen to what they say, what they're into. Um, it's that easy. But it's that complex. Easy yet complex. Um... Another um, thing I wanted to bring to uh, attention is uh, on Facebook, I've noticed a lot of people um, posting a thing uh, regarding um, suicide prevention awareness. And uh, to jump in on that bandwagon, I can post up the, uh, the Veterans Crisis Line is one 800 Two seven three two eight two five five, and press one. Uh, you can go online to the veteranscrisisline.net or on your mobile device. Eight three eight two five five. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of backlash and talk about you know exactly how many veterans commit suicide on a on a daily basis. Uh, whether it's 21, 22, or 23, you know, one is too many. Forget about how many it is. You know, that's that's it's irrelevant information in my opinion. You know, if there's one, it's one too many. Um, but the suicide uh, statistics are pretty pretty unnerving. Um, you know, suicide is, I believe, the the 10th leading cause of death in America. 10th. You know, it's it's interesting. We have so much fear about ISIS and guns and you know this and that. Well, suicide is is number 10. You know, I guess the only thing to fear is fear itself. Um, you know. My opinion is the 
Suicide is just a permanent solution to a temporary problem. It's never easy. Whatever your personal case may be, there's always somebody there willing to listen. I'm always, me personally, I'm a good listener. Um, I don't give any kind of advice. I'm not a medical professional and I don't practice medicine. Um, but if you are kind of down and out and feeling blue, do this. Tie flies. It is absolutely amazing therapy. You know, I'm kind of kind of forced forcing myself to carry on conversations uh, as I sit here and tie live. Um, take this and do a little do a few wraps here, build this up. But usually when I'm when I'm tying, I'm I'm all by myself. My mind is clear and um, not much else to focus on. Just tying flies. I get people who ask me if I if I ever sell my flies. I don't know. You know, I think in maybe an ideal situation, I think if. If there was a fly fishing shop out there, a local fly fishing shop that, you know, would commission me to tie some flies, you know, maybe a few dozen patterns of this and that, I might do that, but I don't know. I think if you, once it becomes work, it's work. And I like it as a hobby. I like it as therapy. But then again, if you love your love your job, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Clear that off. So uh, the whip finish. Um, in case anybody wants to learn how to whip finish, um, it's a fun little tool. Um, I picked it up pretty quick. I really like this kind of uh, utensil. Um, anyways, uh, on this, the handle, it spins freely. And the way I teach it um, out at the VA, uh, you have your bottom speed bump and you have your top hook. And drawing a considerable amount of thread out on the back side, I'm going to lift the thread up on the bottom side of the speed bump. Then I'm going to take the hook and I'm going to lay it flat, straight down, and slowly slide my fingers off of the where the speed bump is. Give it a slight turn and rotation. Form that triangle. And at that point, I can just take a couple wraps with that tip of that triangle. I usually end, aim mine straight up and pull down out of that speed bump and out of that hook. Boom. More green. More green. All right. We'll get this right. I like having um having that variety. A little bit of a little bit of change of the patterns and you know if you find one that really really works more than the other remember which one that was and tie a few more up you know, I could probably never tie another fly in my life and still have plenty to fish with but am I gonna stop tying heck no, I still have plenty of hooks to work with. I got big ones, I got small ones. So this Monday at my uh, fly tying club, we will be tying the autumn 
Splendor. Um, it's been described to me as a cross between a woolly bugger and a tequila. Um, I went ahead and did a little research on it. I like to know what we're tying, at least uh, material-wise, what to bring into the to the club meeting. And it's definitely a, a fun pattern. I think I'm bringing a size. I think I'm bringing size four hooks. But I'll be doing a fast forward, uh, fast forward video and pictures on that later. Um, yeah. So back to the. Back to the suicide, man. It's just such a such a morbid thing to think about, but you know, for some people, that's in their mind, that is the only solution. You know, what does that say about us as a society? You know, uh, I got this got this calendar. It's got all sorts of fishing quotes. And it said uh, something along the line of uh, if we were really focused on things that were important in life, there'd be a world shortage of fishing poles. And so maybe that's why I, I tie so much. Oh, that little bee keeps flying back. I, I really, I don't see the point of really locking down the bead head up front so much, you know, especially when you're going to end up with a whole bunch of gack behind it to hold it and lock it down. Right, I'm going to go a little green, green happy on this. Oh. Add a little bit more wax. We're going for a nice big green dirty thorax. There we go. That ought to do it. And then just a little bit, just the tiniest, tiniest little. I mean, that's, that's almost too much. That's too much. Ah. So hopefully, hopefully soon I will be venturing into some winter fly fishing in the great state of Minnesota. Uh, buddy Dave, he goes down to the um, power plant where the water remains nice and warm. And a couple quick turns on the whip finish. And there we have it. So that is the mercury cased caddis. Uh, hmm. So I was able to locate my tablet, but it is not taking a charge. So it's interesting having all this technology and it really doesn't want to play nice despite our best intentions and all our effort. Yeah, Frank, a, a photo would, would be absolutely great. I, I love the photos. 
I wish people would share share their recipes a little bit more. You know, maybe not necessarily a step by step, but you know, at least heck, even a, a name of the fly it gives people something to work off of. But no, oh, hey, maybe it's a secret secret recipe. But if it's that much of a secret, why are you posting it online? I don't know. So if you're on line and you're posting pictures of your flies, give it a name. Or let us know it's unnamed. I know everybody can just ask, but you know, I there's a reason why the gas pumps are labeled. You don't have to just stop and ask, hey mister, how much is that gas? So, we are back to, um, I haven't been showing my dubbing. I'm really not sure exactly what the mixture is of this. Um, just labeled number one. Kind of has a yellowish, kind of a tannish, maybe a little bit of olive. I don't think it's a blue, blueing olive, BWO. But it seems to be working nice. I like it. And this UV ice is pretty fun to work with. I can see why it's so popular. But then again, I have to ask, what does the fish say? What did the trout say? Just read that book. What did the trout say? Uh, I wish I knew the author's name off the top of my head. I don't have that book with me anymore. I pass that along to my father to read. So if you want to know the author's name, you can Google it. All right, here we go. Our little can dummy noodle. I really like. I don't know why I like it, but I like taking taking things down past the bend quite a bit, especially on these smaller patterns. Um, I don't know. Does it? I, I think it looks a little bit better. Maybe gives it a little bit more action in the water. Again, you know, we're talking about in this case a a size 18 hook. You know, dragging, dredging, maybe not dragging and dredging. Hopefully staying just inside the water column. So, here we go. Might do a little bit more, but it's easier to add than it is to subtract on the dubbing. I mean, these are just, just a few, few fibers. But boy, when they get wrapped up around the thread, they sure know how to, they sure know how to stick together. They're all friends. You know, the same, same kind of goes with uh, this black, super fine ice dubbing. I mean, it's, it's an Eric Leiser, Leiser, not sure how to pronounce it, um, just in a bag. That's all I got. That's my last little piece I'm probably going to use tonight. There we go. Because just a little bit goes a long way with dubbing. And I think this is a, a very easy fly to practice dubbing. At least the dubbing noodle. That's going to be it. And a final little whip finish. Just a few turns. And lock it down. 
So that was, I don't know, six or so mercury-cased caddis um, from the Pat Dorsey book, uh, Fly Tying, or Tying and Fishing, Tailwater Flies. So 500 step-by-step -step photos for 24 proven patterns. It's a pretty good book. Get, check it out. Um, oh, which reminds me, i got to get back to the library. Um, I have a library book to return. This was the Fly Fishing for Beginners, How to Tie 50 Fail-Safe Flies by Pete Gathercole. Gathercole. It's amazing what you can pick up at the library, uh, boys and girls. You know, it's uh, usually it's pretty quiet. Usually pretty quiet at the libraries. I don't know if they've uh, they'll allow somebody in there with a little portable bench vice or pedestal vice and fur and feathers flying around galore. But local libraries, they. Eh? They're the hidden, hidden gems of knowledge, and uh, be sure to check it out. I, I found that the library, my local library, has I don't know, maybe twenty books or so related to fly fishing. Maybe half or so are fly tying. Um, the other half are you know, rivers and how to cast and whatnot. So, uh, wrapping things up this evening. Uh, this has been a, uh, a veteran's view for you live stream. Um, hopefully, maybe after uh, after Christmas, the quality and film production will be better. Um, but you never know. I might go door busting at uh, Best Buy or uh, you know see if my local computer shop uh, will have a I don't know what is it Small Business Saturday. Don't forget hit your small businesses up. Be safe out there at least up here in the Upper Midwest. Uh, we got solid four inches of snow. Really windy. Power was kind of flickering on and off. So be safe out there. Um, Put up my plug-in for the the Veterans Crisis Line, 1-800-273-8255. Press 1 or hit them up on the veteranscrisisline.net and you can actually uh, live chat um, through Messenger on their uh, website. Or you can chat to them uh, via text message at... Eight three eight two five five. Um, hopefully you won't need it, uh, but if you ever, if, I don't know, I saw one on Facebook a while back. If you have considered or attempted suicide in the last last year, we're we're still glad you're here. Uh, glad you're here to watch this video. Um, so do me a favor. Uh, click subscribe. Never miss a video here on Veterans View for you. Um, hit the share button. Spread the word. Be sure to uh, follow along on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, give me uh, that almighty thumbs up. Check out my fast forward videos. Check out uh, season one of uh, Veterans View for you. Uh, really covered a lot of initial topics that um, were coming to mind. So, all right, folks, thank you. Have a great evening. Uh, tight lines, happy fishing. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.